if we can predict uh, Jeffrey, who may be a coffee or let's say uh, juice drinker, <laughs> uh, what is he most likely to buy next? Now, instead of pushing that promotion to him via email, if that can be automated via an algorithm and push a real-time notification along with an offer. Oh, yeah. Uh, that, for me, is, is a game changer. Welcome back to another episode of Digital Innovations in Oil and Gas with me, your host, Jeffrey Kahn. And on today's episode, uh, we're going to dig into the rapidly changing world of consumer retail in the fuel sector, specifically mobility fuels. Uh, those of us who have cars and drive around uh, are occasionally visitors to convenience retail stores, places to purchase gasoline, chocolate bars, coffee. Well, this world is undergoing tremendous change along with much else in the energy sector. And uh, it's always important, I think, for uh, those of us who are paying attention to the industry to keep an eye on what goes on in other places that we might not get the chance to visit. And one of those places is uh, deep in the Middle East. I, last time I visited the Middle East was uh, before the pandemic, unfortunately not since. Uh, but on today's episode, I'm joined by Suryavir Singh, who is the head of customer loyalty and CRM analytics for the Emirates National Oil Company, which is one of the uh, larger oil companies in the Middle East. Uh, Suri, welcome to Digital Innovations in Oil and Gas. Thanks for having me, Jeffrey. Pleasure to be here. It's such a pleasure. You and I talked about doing this months and months ago. It's been a struggle to get it lined up, but, but we're uh, finally here. Let's start, though, with a little of your uh, personal and professional background. How on earth did you end up uh, first in the oil industry, and then secondly, focused on this rather uh, important area of consumer uh, retail, the consumer experience, loyalty, et cetera. Uh, Jeffrey, the one word for it is chance. Uh, <laughs> it's, it's, it's all happened by chance. Um, started my career out in banking. I've said this before, you know, it was banking, advertising, insurance, and customer loyalty happened in the Middle East. Uh, while I kind of took up a small role at a luxury retail uh, local, uh, let's say, distributor out in the UAE. Mm. And, um, and that's that's where I sort of fell in love with the, the whole concept of customer service, customer loyalty, CRM, and, you know, the entire universe of um, data analytics and all of it. And yes, I uh, got a tr got an interesting uh, opportunity out at the Emirates National Oil Company when they were setting up a program. I was uh, the one responsible to kind of lead that initiative, bring Yes Rewards to life. And uh, I've kind of now been in the loyalty business for over 10 years. Yeah, trading a career out of it. Ba the banking sector was one of the very, very first to embrace uh, digital innovations in North America. It was... Uh, tele automated teller machines. Once consumers got used to interacting with a, uh, a a machine instead of going to a human teller, it wasn't a big stretch to go into uh, apps on your phone to do things like banking information, banking checking, and the like. I presume that's where you your your financial background exactly. started. I mean, no, I, I was down in retail banking at the time. Uh, I started out as I, I started out my career in sales, and uh, all right, uh, but moved into the marketing side of things more, you know, when I was in advertising and then in the insurance side of uh, the business. So I worked with MetLife after that. Yeah. But uh, the whole concept, you know, as you, you rightly said, digital innovations kind of kicked off right from the time when ATMs came into existence. Exactly. And then now we're talking about cash, cash, cashless economies and also cryptocurrencies and so on and so forth. So the space has kind of continuously evolved and I think loyalty is going to always stay or be at the forefront, the forefront yeah, of it. I think so. I think that's quite right. M money is inherently digital now. Um, very few of us exactly. even touch physical money. It's all done in bits and bytes. So it's inherently digital. And therefore, it's logical that the, the money world uh, would, would transform very, very quickly along with that. Let, let me, let's, uh, if you don't mind, could you characterize the, uh, the, the, the context within which you operate in the Middle East? Oh, uh, but for those so, who don't uh, know the Middle so East the, uh, or have a chance to have been there, they won't appreciate just how sophisticated so, the society is. So the Emirates National Oil Company is uh, is a Dubai-based uh, company. We're, yeah. we're a Dubai government-owned entity. Mm -hmm. And we operate in the UAE and uh, Saudi Arabia. 
we have a vast network of uh, gas stations across the region here. And uh, I mean, though we kind of operate across uh, different different streams of the fuel uh, the fuel business, mm. my focus per se is in the more on the customer side of things, as we call it. You know, customize you you know introduce me in customer loyalty and CRM, so we kind of deal with the day to day customer who comes to uh, fill his. You know, tank at our uh, petrol stations, yeah. uh, walk into our convenience stores and, you know, whatever else he does within our network as Enoch. Uh, that's that's more or less uh, privy as part of Enoch's retail uh, business. And that's that's the gamut in which Yes Rewards as a program operates. Yeah. And uh, I mean, we, but we do cater to a fairly large audience. And what is what is the uh, what, what's ch what's changing or what's interesting about that environment? I presume you know everyone uh, has a mobile phone now, so that's one big change. What else is going on, um, Jeffrey? You'll be you'll be surprised to hear this. One of the most uh, is one of the world's most let's say highly accepted digital uh, or digitally forefront uh, you know regions in the world as hmm. far as customer mobile mobile is concerned, and you know apps and social media and so on and so forth. Yeah. Uh, if if you look at the number of programs today in the region within the UAE, it's phenomenal. You know, right from retailers to convenience stores to, you know, uh, all the oil companies. That I mean, if you look at within the UAE, you've got uh, three big oil companies, uh, yeah. which is the Adnoc in Abu Dhabi. We've got Imarat, and now you've got Enoch. Each one of us has a rewards program, which I think was unheard of five years ago. So you, it's it's all happened. Uh, so quickly and suddenly there's this whole shift in the mindset of an industry where you know oil and gas as you would probably know it was has been a legacy industry right and uh, it was uh, it, it, we, we were not upfront when it came up you know we were not the, at the forefront of technology we were, we were sort of the end users at the end of it or the last ones to adapt to this technology but now when you look at the way the industry has changed in the region uh, you know it's exciting days ahead what is the um, uh, penetration rate, or the you know, in terms of numbers of vehicles are driving around? How many of the of the the uh, drivers or operators of vehicles would be a participant in a loyalty program of some kind? Must be pretty high. So I, I guess I mean I won't be able to give you exact numbers to be fair, uh, Jeffrey. But I mean, if you look at there are two kinds of drivers in this, uh, in the region, right? And one yeah. is uh, your individual consumers who are uh, you know the mother, the father, the everyday office goer. Yeah. And then you've yeah. got fleet customers, which is um, your taxis, which which are your Ubers and you know your uh, other commercial fleets and so on and so forth. Now. The interesting thing, again, your Ubers and Kareem, which is, again, another ride-hailing uh, entity in, uh, in the UAE, are also individuals at the end of the day. They operate as individual businesses. So, I mean, if you look at the penetration, chances are 90% would have either one of the applications. Now, if you're in Abu Dhabi, you pr probably have uh, an ad-knock application. But if you are in Dubai, then you're 90, 90 or I would say 100% you're fueling with us. So <clears> how many have a higher penetration in, in that sense? Yeah, and how many retail outlets um, are under the uh, under the Yes program? How many how many retailers are you covering? So I mean, we have over 200, uh, 200 stations, close to two hundred stations. But if you understand uh, the way we operate, is not just uh, the fueling stations. We've yeah. got convenience. We've got something called uh, Auto Pro, which is uh, Auto Pro is our own brand, which is a uh, uh, which has car service, oil change, and all of that. So it's it's all in all. You know, automotive uh, workshop, so yeah. to say. Uh, we register cars on behalf of the RTA, which is a brand called Tashjil. Uh, it's a very unique, uh, uh, unique, let's say, a model where you actually go and physically test your car for roadworthiness. Oh, sure. And, uh, you know, you get a green or a red light to say, you know, whether your car is in perfect condition to be on the streets, and uh, it's permitted to drive. So that is something that we kind of also manage from and represent. I mean, it's, it's let's say it's a, in collaboration with the Road Transport Authority here in Dubai. Yeah. So uh, three or four very unique different businesses. Uh, and yes, as a program operates across them all. Yeah. Well, so the program, the logo I've got on the screen here is yes. Uh, where, where, can you care, uh, share a little bit of the origins of the name and the brand? Because it's very... Uh, it's, an, it's, it's an interesting story, uh, Jeffrey. I mean... 
you know, um, we kind of had, uh, there, were, there were many names that came up at the time. And then sure. one of the things, which is a very interesting what, concept, or let's say, I wouldn't even call it a concept. It was the fact that, you know, in life, we all say no most of the times. You know, if somebody asks you, can you do this? It's like, yeah, I'm no, maybe kind of thing, you know. And uh, we said, guess what? Why not come up with a word that is as simple as yes with a tagline that says, let's say yes to more every day. Yes. And it has a very positive message and it's simple. And we just came up with yes rewards. <laughs> Obviously, it works because it's, uh, it's a success. Uh, as a, uh, if a consumer is interacting with the uh, loyalty program, um, uh, how do they do? Is it a, an app on a phone? I presume because it's when you're purchasing fuel. Obviously, you're out in your vehicle, so it's a phone-based app. What what else is what else comprises the the uh, yes? So it's an app. app. So Jeffrey, it's an app and a website, right? It it mm -hmm. is uh, it is a fully functional integrated application that sort of kind of um, integrates with all our different businesses, and we of course have a website which. I would say not many consumers use at the moment because you. Right. I mean, you know, that's the way the digital economy or let's say digitization oh, has worked. Everybody wants everything on a on the palm of the hands today. Yeah. Uh, we've also got a co-branded card with a bank, which is a fuel rewards card, which allows consumers to um, you know get a cashback on or cashback or let's call it points back on fuel, mm -hmm. and um, it is also the first fuel rewards card in the region. So, you know, we give up to a 15% back on fuel, which is unheard of. And I think that drives immense amount of value for drivers who, uh, you know, frequent uh, our, yeah, store, our stations and, uh, you know, the roads of UAE. Yeah, volume drivers. What have you learned from the, I mean, you're, you're given your role in analytics, obviously you're not only uh, building out the program, but analyzing consumer behavior. What are the sorts of things that you've learned from consumer behavior based on the launch of the program and its execution? So one of, uh, one of the interesting things that we've kind of got, which um, I think especially for listeners outside of the UAE, you know, where gas is a little maybe more expensive than the UAE is the yeah. fact that UAE consumers today are becoming price sensitive. Um, gone are the days where fuel was cheaper than water and, you know, all, all, all those interesting things that we heard. Today, the consumer uh, has become very price, uh, you know, price sensitive. They are not agnostic anymore. Yeah. So they see where they get value. That they understand, all, they're, they're all very tech savvy, so they understand value. You know, by, you, gone are the days where loyalty programs had hidden uh, promotions, uh, very, you know, blurry point systems and so on and so forth, which actually confused users then actually, you know, got them integrated in programs. Oh. And which is, which is ensured that today, if consumers understand your program well, they know what they get, they, they see value in it and uh, they come back to you and they also let you know when they feel the pinch or they don't like something. So uh, it, it's been it's it's been very interesting. Uh, it's bro probably broken a lot of myths as well, uh, but at the same time, it's also kind of given us some post amount of data to, you know, segment our customers the way we do and become more relevant as a program. Where do you see the customer uh, relationship headed here? Uh, and and here I'm thinking about the. Uh, uh, the uh, consumers are going to at least some some fleet operators certainly will move on to more uh, say electric vehicles. They're, they're uh, will they be? How do you how do you extend this loyalty thinking to that consumer that doesn't have that sort of regular visit to your well, station? Well, elect uh, you know it is happening. Yeah, but it's going to take some time, right? Electrification. I mean, it's 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 uh, it's in the future. Years, yeah. Uh, now, whether it's electric or it's hydrogen is still debatable. Uh, having said that, it is important to understand that your consumer, right, uh, will or still come to get his coffee in the morning. Uh, what is it that your gas station does more in the future? So, I mean, if petrol is not the anchor anymore. Uh, what next? Um, you know, is it is it a co work? Is it a place where people can come and charge their cars? Uh, and or uh, does it become sort of a destination where you can have a meeting and you know you uh, pick up your groceries and you have your morning cup of coffee and so on and so forth? Mm. There are decisions to be taken because that's a complete switch from a business side of things. 
But the interesting part about loyalty is that now you've got the huge set of customer data uh, and you're able to see using your co-brand uh, information is what else do your customers do and sign up the right kind of partnerships. Uh, you always have the opportunity to pivot to, the diff- uh, to an alternative business and uh, you're doing it on the back of data rather than, you know, a guess that we would have made back in the day. Yeah, I think that's really important. The fact that you've uh, got the uh, program running, has been running for a while, you've assembled this massive, very, very valuable consumer insight, which allows you to be much more surgical around how you place your your future investments in in, uh, the, in that retail space. I think that's really powerful. I, I, absolutely, yes, Jeffrey. I mean, uh, one is, of course, the insights and the investments that we make going forward. Uh, but as a program as well, because today, as pro, you know, programs make you money yeah. and yeah. partnerships make you money. And it allows you to get the right kind of partners on board, whether it's an airline, it's a hotel or another retail chain, uh, you know, and we've noticed this in a big, big way when, uh, you know, a lot of uh, local retailers, you know, even malls come to partner with us. You know, we've been able to see the kind of, um, you know, uh, uptake they have with regards to the program and the fact that the consumer is still the same. Right? So whether he, whether it's him shopping in a luxury store or, you know, flying on, on the Emirates Airlines or any of the other airlines in the UAE, the fact is, uh, you need to see what makes sense for your business and for your consumer and for the program commercially to uh, optimize that partnership. Yeah. Is this sort of program, uh, do you think, exportable outside of the Dubai area? Because that's a, the beautiful thing about Dubai. It's pretty, it's pretty geographically um, contained, right? Uh, but the, this, these extended uh, loyalty programs, I mean, could go everywhere, couldn't they? So there are different ways to do that, Jeffrey. I mean, one can be through travel partnerships, of course, yes. Uh, Uh, Dubai is uh, a tourist-centric city. I mean, you've got the number of tourists that come to this country is is huge. And uh, if there are ways you can make a tourist's life life easy, Mm -hmm. be it uh, tourists coming in from China, Europe, Asia, India, or the U.S., uh, then it might tomorrow transition into a lifestyle app that, is relevant to a tourist the moment he's flying into the city, you know, and that again, you know, going back to my point saying, if it's the right partners, uh, why not? If you can get a tourist, a relevant offer, a discount at a, you know, a local attraction, and you can ensure that you become one of the must have applications, even if, even if a tourist comes and comes and rents a car. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's a bit like if you're traveling to uh, China, uh, you uh, you all uh, first thing you have to do is download WeChat and set up your account. Exactly. Otherwise, you can't function correctly in the society. So I think you, you can imagine a similar vision here for uh, tourists visiting uh, Dubai. Um, Suri, where where uh, where have you seen the greatest um, uh, value lift that comes from uh, these kinds of uh, programs, this loyalty program? Is it in increased fuel sales? Is it in uh, uh, more frequent visits to the establishment? Where, where's the value that you've seen this? Really so the biggest, uh, I mean, the greatest value that we get from it is, of course, one is customer data. But the second thing is, what do you do with that customer data? Uh, now, fuel is a commodity with, uh, you know, fixed margins or let's say relatively lower Low margins. margins. Yeah, But it's yeah. the non-fuel business which has... Uh, the higher margins now, whether it's convenience or uh, a car wash, oil change, yeah. and all of those ancillary products that you know make up that convenience or let's say the forecourt area, and that's where and that's where you make your money. So, there, I, I guess there are two important things. One, of course, is the uh, the ancillary revenue coming in from all your uh, brands. So we've got a brand called Zoom, and uh, our car wash or automotive brand called Auto Pro. So the amount of footfall that we've seen increase in our C stores or our you know, service centers is huge. The other important part of it is creating that sense of association with the Enoch brand rather than fuel being a commodity where consumers tend to get agnostic of uh, yeah. where they go. Right? Oh, you generally fuel your car when your needle hits empty. 
But the fact is, how do you incentivize a customer or how do we ensure that our customers go that extra mile or maybe take that U-turn to come back to our gas station and not our competitors and come and fuel with us? So that's where we've seen the value in terms of, of course, frequency of visits. But most importantly, I would say cross shop. Yeah, that's very, very powerful. I know there was a move in North America many years ago. It never really went anywhere. But the ability to adjust prices fuel at the, at the pump uh, very marginally during time of day. So um, r raise prices, say, by a penny or two pennies per liter in the morning drive in so that you could uh, ca capture uh, uh, a, a little incremental margin. Uh, similarly, uh, lower prices in the middle of the day, raise the price at the end of the day. This sort of very, very marginal uh, adjustment never went anywhere because the consumers all saw the, the price moving around like this and getting very irritated. You can't game that, right? Consumers are that. smart. And for yeah. us here, we can't raise prices or we can't play. Prices are regulated. So all whether right. you go to any of the gas stations, it's all the same. Uh, we are not, uh, we don't do that. It's all regulated by the Ministry of Energy and uh, what the price is for the month, it stays that. Just fixed, right? So it's fixed, right? So you've got fuel as a level playing field, but now it's what you do to kind of ah, yeah. add to your non-fuel business. And of course, play on the fact that customer experience is very important. I mean, if you've been to Dubai, uh, Jeffrey, you'd probably see the gas stations here are, you know, um, I, I think they're very well maintained. The experience of a guy driving into your gas station and, you know, you've got an attendant fueling your car and all of it. So it's it's also about the experience that you have while you're there for that small amount of time to fuel yeah. your car. Yeah. Well, I have to admit, when I've been in, in Dubai, uh, I've been in, in taxis. And so I, I and they didn't. Well, you they, haven't you haven't had that experience. I have that. not, unfortunately. Yeah. Well, you drive by and you realize uh, exceptionally well maintained, very clean, well lit. Uh, you know, they, they look more like, um, uh, you know, when you're going through a really high end shopping mall, it looks like you're, you're interacting with a high end brand, not a. Yeah. So uh, we've got digital screens and so yeah, on and so forth. So we yeah. try to give a very, let's say an elevated experience, even though it's just a, simply a gas station. Yeah. When you think about it, just a gas station, where do you see the uh, loyalty programs of the future uh, headed? I mean, the, you have, you already established your sort of base ecosystem and the shopping and the like, where do you see this headed next? Like what, where else could you go and where do you see this going? I mean, if you talk about us, we 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 are we are headed the commercial partnerships way, right? We want to be as relevant to our consumers. And today, the interesting part is now there are two things that can happen in, um, let's say, a city like ours. One one of course is uh, collaborations, because if every brand is to have a program of their own, yeah, it's impossible to download. It's you're not gonna your cost of acquisition is gonna be way too high. Yes. And consumers are not going to have, uh, you know, more than X number of applications on their phone because you know, there is digital exhaustion, as I call it, uh, or app exhaustion that that has already started to set in. Uh, so one, of course, uh, collaboration between brands, but the ones who will survive the uh, in the long run are apps or programs that provide a better lifestyle experience than just a single brand or a multi-brand experience. So A, you have to be relevant commercially, which mm -hmm. is the basics. But second, you have to also stand for something as a program. So, you know, wherein your consumer identifies with your brand or your program and you are a part of his everyday life in whatever small way, you know, it could be, I mean, let's say today it may be just filling up gas, but uh, tomorrow it could be things like, you know, peer-to-peer -peer points transfer or, uh, you know, different engagement gamification opportunities on the phone, mm. or even the fact that you've got uh, a right partners where he's getting valuable discounts, which actually matter to him. Yeah. So, you know, keeping it simple, but staying relevant. And I think this point about uh, lifestyle and being part of someone's lifestyle is actually really critical. You can't even get there without the the analytics and the data. Tell me a little bit about exactly. the the, CR, the the analytics environment uh, here. How are you? What are you doing to crunch all of this data and make sense of it? What kinds of tools do you use? So I mean, uh, we use uh, we we use different BI tools. We work with Comarch, that has been our backend uh, loyalty engine, but also we use a lot of their BI support in uh, in terms of um, 
understanding our customers. Yeah. Uh, we we hyper segment customers based on various different parameters, right? From you know, from their age, nationality, gender. I know gender's been a complicated issue out in the West, but here in, in the UAE, I mean, we we do that along with uh, various spend, frequency, and value segments. Yeah. Uh, we of course we analyze how many of our consumers fuel with us and not go to our uh, you know C store or our automotive uh, businesses, mm. but we also kind of run offers for them to drive them there and ensure that we kind of ensure that repeat purchase. Uh, we have a welcome journey that we have for new seg- new users, and uh, you know right from value frequency segmenting, then we kind of also push our other uh, you know alternate businesses so let's say if it's a co-branded credit card that we're uh, trying you know that we want our consumers to have mm-hmm. you know, so there is a certain segment that we have seen that has a higher affinity uh, to using a fuel card versus a segment that will you know, will not move to a card so i mean at the end of the day there is there is a ton of uh, information out there but the most important part of it is also to understand that uh, what uh, requires the most amount of attention and yields the best results, both commercially and also from a customer, uh, you know, longevity perspective. Yeah, that's very important uh, a, a component here. Uh, there was a um, a major cyber incident uh, here in in North America uh, back about uh, nine months ago. Uh, in right. the, uh, uh, one of the uh, one of the majors had their loyalty program attacked, and it brought the brought their loyalty programming down. Uh, so this has created a hyper sensitivity now around cyber activity. Uh, where how do you see the cyber world from from where you sit? Because you're, you're you've got a lot of consumer data here, so it must be pretty high. It, on the it, I mean, it is it's stressful for us as well. We have to ensure you we are GDPR compliant, although. Yeah. Uh, in the UAE, GDPR still doesn't, let's say, apply. But the fact that we have a European loyalty operator in the back, uh, we ensure GDPR compliance. As far as security is concerned, uh, we are a government entity. For us, uh, data protection is, you know, secure. let's say I won't just talk about data protection, but I'm talking mm. about IT security is one of the most critical things uh, as an organization. Uh, because the risk of losing a day's business because of a cyber attack for us, the risks are huge, and especially yeah. in oil and gas. Uh, you know, when you're looking at uh, jet fuel aviation, uh, where you're fueling an uh, airport, or for that matter, the kind of customer data that we have a breach, you know, uh, at in any of our data centers is hugely um, it is a stressful it's job, stress, right? Yeah. You know, I don't, I don't envy the job of my IT data security managers, but um, I think we are very, very aggressive in constantly ensuring and updating our data protection policies and the kind of uh, tools we have to ensure that our data is safe. Yeah. Um, but, but again, having said that, this is as much as a threat it is to us as it is in, in the U.S. or Europe or anywhere else in the world. Yeah, there you're not you're not immune to this, uh, 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 and um, uh, the tools that uh, you know people use uh, uh, to sort out and attack one uh, successfully uh, migrate very quickly around the the dark web and become tools for all. So, so, but it is very important that that uh, you stay uh, abreast of all of this. What about all of these newer tools coming in? How are you leveraging things like uh, artificial intelligence and autonomy and robots, et, et cetera? There's a lot of application possibilities, I suspect. So there's a lot happening, Jeffrey. We, at the moment, I'll be very, very honest. I don't think we've really gone far ahead on the AI space. I mean, this is, uh, I mean, it's much talked about everywhere. Yeah. We haven't, as far, at least from the from a program perspective, we haven't. But at the same time, we have started using a bit of machine learning algorithms to kind of um, test and learn how we can run promotions where we know what the member's going to buy next real time uh-huh. and generate an offer real time. So that itself is in a big, you know, back in the day you had customer segmentation where you ran a market basket sort of an analysis and, you know, you had product recommendation and a lot of luxury retailers were doing this, you know, if you bought a bag and then what next would you pair it with a yeah. pair of shoes? But in the convenience store world, this is a hugely different uh, experience because if 
we can predict uh, Jeffrey, who may be a coffee or let's say a uh, juice drinker, <laughs> uh, what is he most likely to buy next? Now, instead of pushing that promotion to him via email, if that can be automated via an algorithm and push a real-time notification along with an offer. Oh, yeah. Uh, that, for me, is is a game changer. We've piloted that uh, for a certain set of customers. I wouldn't really say the first time it wasn't as successful as we had imagined. But the fact that this is possible, it only begs the question, you know, how far away are we from complete automation as far as offer management is concerned? Yeah, you can, you can see that. I, I know that I I'm, I'm personally would be susceptible to that if I... <laughs> Jeff, I pulled into the gas station and uh, uh, the, the station recognized that I'm there and sent an offer to my phone uh, saying, hey, welcome back. Uh, we know you are a huge fan of coffee and we've got a special on lattes right now. I'd be like, I think I'll go into the store. <laughs> Grab a cup well, of that, that is something we do at the moment. But Jeffrey, imagine the same message actually says, hey, Jeffrey, uh, you know, Thanks for buying your latte. Here's an yeah. offer on, uh, you know, a bag of chips, yeah. which has got yeah. nothing to do with a latte. But guess what? Jeffrey would go and pick up that chips because Jeffrey's aligned to do that yeah. based on yeah. a certain behavior that you have exhibited at some point in time. Yeah. So, which is which is that surprise element that comes in, and that you can actually end up uh, driving customers to a category which otherwise you common sense would not have would let not you go. go there. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Such a powerful idea. Uh, sorry, this has been a fascinating discussion on all of the, uh, the art of the possible on loyalty programming. Uh, if, if people are really interested, uh, say they're outside of uh, Dubai area and uh, not presently a customer, where would they go and find information about the, the program and what, how it works? What's yes. Rewards. Yes. Rewards.ae. That's our website. Um, yeah. Unfortunately, the app is only available. I mean, app yeah. is there on uh, on Apple and on uh, Google Play Store, but sadly, I don't think it makes sense to them in the US or outside no. of the UAE. Visit our you can visit our website yesrewards.ae. Yeah, um, download the app if nothing else. Why not? You can download <laughs> it and have a look. Happy to answer any questions anyone might have on the program or about CRM, customer loyalty, and data. Thank you so much for coming on the podcast today. I appreciate it. Thank you so much, Jeffrey. Thanks for having me. This has been another episode of Digital Innovations in Oil and Gas. Uh, this week, live from the United Arab Emirates, and uh, Suri Singh, of, uh, who is, looks after the loyalty program called Yes Rewards. I'll return next week with another podcast, and uh, bye for now.